I'm going to be showing you guys how to modify a stator plate. One of the issues with a motorcycle or a snowmobile stator plate, this happens to be off of an 86 Arctic Cat Cougar 500, is that what I wanted was extra protection around where the, the back of the plate allows the wires to come through. Because from the factory, when I just pulled this out, I was having some electrical issues with the, with the sled. Turns out I had a bad CDI box, but in the meantime, I took this out and checked the coils, the trigger coil, the charging coil, and the stator windings. They're all good. But what I want is extra protection. You can see I got heat shrink here, and I extended my wires um, going through that hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down, and I'm going to wind up opening that hole up more so that when I heat shrink all these, I can slip another heat shrink over the top and get up through that hole to guarantee that through engine vibration and whatnot, none of my wires are going to fray and short to ground right here because this, this hole is really too small for, uh, for all these wires to come through and be comfortable. One of the yellows on the static oil had a nick in it, and uh, I fixed that with some logical tape and some heat shrink. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this all down, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to open that up. That way you can avoid future issues with uh, statters going shorting to ground due to uh, engine vibration. Now, just for illustration here, I just want to show you that um, your ignition coils usually have two screws that hold them on. You get your, your trigger coil and your uh, charging coil, and then you've got three screws, at least on this style st statter, mid-80s. Um, Arctic cat. Take those screws out and then you can pull your plate right off. Now you have access to what's going on here. Now if you look at this, you see, that? see right above my finger? Let me get something. If you look right there, that's where I had a short coming off of the uh, stator windings right there this hole is just a little too small all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like a Dremel tool or a drill bit or something and I'm gonna come right up through here and I'm gonna open that right up I want about another maybe eighth of an inch all the way right here I want room there so that way I can get a little extra insulation on some of these uh, these wires and you're not going to hurt anything because when this is in the engine, the hole that the wires come out of, when they go through the uh, engine block itself, the casing, the hole is twice the size of this. Where the rubber grommet sits when the wires exit and head out to your CDI. Um, so opening this up will not hurt this plate whatsoever. You, you won't do any damage. You can only help yourself by opening that hole up. It's just too small. So I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff together and uh, I'm going to drill that out and open it up and see what we get for a uh, little extra protection on our stator wires. Okay, so now I'm down in my little workshop and I happen to have a Dremel with one of these carving bits on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that right up so that I can get these wires through nice and Nice and clean, with no hassles, no issues. You take the metal right off with this, it's kind of nice, I like it. I was going to use a drill bit, I decided not to. So you don't need to watch me do the whole thing. I'm going to uh, open it up and I'll be right back and I'll show you how far we went with it. Now what you'll see is that I open that hole right up. There's plenty of room in there for the wires to come through and I still have my clippability. The only thing we need to do now is we want it to be smooth enough here all along the edges so that we can permanently eliminate the wiring going through here 
on a vibrating motor getting cut anywhere in here. So all we've got to do is, you know, a little filing, a little bit of sandpaper, both sides, round it off nice, nice, where you take your finger right through there. You want to go nice and tight. If you can stick your finger in there and twist and, you know, not get cut because it's smooth enough, then you're definitely not going to cut wire if you can't cut your finger. Um, so that's what we're after now. We're just going to go right through. We're going to round off all these edges and smooth it out, polish it up a little bit, and that will permanently eliminate one of the issues with snowmobiles, motorcycles, etc., ATVs, where your starter windings or your initial, your ignition coil windings um, come through and they vibrate and they get cut right here because it's just too tight. There's no reason for the hole to be that small, and uh, we'll see what it looks like after I finish polishing this up. Okay, now I've opened this thing up probably at least a quarter inch all the way around, so there's plenty of room for extra heat shrink insulation in there, whatever you want to do. Um, you can kind of see it in the video, I think, but to feel it, it's nice and smooth all the way around. There's no sharp edges, no jagged edges. The chance for one of the wires vibrating to get nicked on any of this right now is virtually impossible. That pro that's one of the problems that some people have and that problem has been eliminated. I would do this to a brand, if I bought a brand new starter, I would take it apart and do this to it. Absolutely. I'm an electrician by trade and uh, wiring on sharp edges like this plate originally had, not good. Take it apart, open it up. I'm going to clean this up a little bit of sandpaper. Just put it on my finger and just to really smooth it out nice. But um, I'll put it back together and, and we'll see what it looks like compared to what it looked like before. So, as you can see, the hole is uh, much bigger. There's much more play in there. That whole problem where these wires were coming through and it was so tight has pretty much been eliminated. So that's one source of electrical problems that people have. They get cuts right there. So I'm going to finish heat shrinking these wires up, and what I'll probably do is, is I'll use small heat shrink on these two, and then I'll, uh, I'll heat shrink the whole thing in one bundle. That way when the clip goes and this gets pressed up, everything looks nice, nice. Maybe I'll even silicone this up for fun, just to help keep moisture out of there. But the whole problem with these uh, edges being sharp and nicking some of the, uh, the stator wires or the ignition coil wires, that's, that's gone, eliminated. So I think it's a good idea, and on any motorcycle or snowmobile ATV, this is one of the first things I would do if I was suspecting that I had electrical problems and I went to the, to the trouble of taking the stator out. If I, if I took the flywheel off and pulled the stator, I would absolutely do this in a second to everyone.